Johnson on uh, Sunday, February 14th. I hope you'll join us for a spin on the Hi everybody, welcome to Live at Five. Uh, we have a great show for you today. I hope you'll enjoy it. We are going to cover the song uh, How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. And of course I have my uh, ex uh, distinguished guest with me, my daughter Jamie, who is on from North Carolina. A little technical difficulty as, as par for us. Uh, something that's interesting about this week is it does happen to be Valentine's Day, and also happens to be Jamie's 30, uh, sorry, her birthday, sorry, sorry about that, and we have special pictures available for you today, and there are the pictures, so one of those, uh, it was taken in Arizona, and that was your, probably your first look at my bass drum, which probably looked like the Grand Canyon at that point, and then the other one was two years later, or a year later, and, uh, um, we were just having, I think it was your second birthday party, I believe. So, oh my God. So cute. that's pretty cool. I love it. So, they are. Yeah. Um, as always, no, you know, uh, I was going to just mention that if we, if there are sound troubles that we're not aware of, please let us know. We're, um, we're just, um, you know, we're doing this new Zoom thing. You notice I'm not wearing my headset now. So if there's sound problems, let us know. It's hard for us to tell. But So you were going to say, Jamie? Oh, yeah, Speaking of chill day, <laughs> speaking of chill day, wind chills of up to 20 below here in Kansas, so uh, we're looking forward to getting out of the deep freeze, but there in North Carolina, it's rainy and 40, boo-hoo, but that's nice. You did pay your dues, though. You paid your dues in Milwaukee, that's for sure. Okay. 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 Um, they're saying, Jamie, they're having trouble hearing you on yours. Okay. So. so I'm in my speaker voice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, there we have a first time member, uh, Ken is on and uh, says hello and um, happy you're here. I hope everybody's here. Frank, good to see you. Um, yeah, they're Jamie. Not they're, not, they're not changing. Do you think you could uh, pivot to your, uh, your earbuds maybe? Or does that help? No, I can, well, I can, but I want to just hear for a moment. I don't, they're not connected. Okay. Sorry. 
Well, I can, uh, uh, let me talk about the music for just a minute. We want them to hear you. So, uh, so How Deep Is Your Love is available at uh, bradshoresmusic.com. And then, of course, you go to the Steel Drum uh, page. You can download that. And, um, okay, so um, we're just looking at the chat for a minute. So, anyway, I'm looking at the piece. I'm going to run through it. Um, just not the whole thing, uh, but and then we'll talk more about it. But I'm, I wanted you to hear what, what we're going to be playing. something that I just love to play that song and we thought it was appropriate for today being Valentine's Day so um, let's see Jamie let's give a can you give us a little test to um, we show Jamie's uh, stuff here and we played through there now I wanted Jamie to uh, give us a gig uh, sorry give us a tip on something that you play on this song that is helpful more full and rich when you um, when you add that doubling on the 
Great, good stuff. Um, let's see what uh, Bubble Brad has for us today. Bubble Bad, <laughs> Bubble Bad Brad, who's a Bubble guy. Uh, his word of the day is repeat sign, and uh, we have the repeat sign um, shown there on that on that part on that page. You can see that now. If I go to the board over here, don't look at this for just a second. This is a repeat sign. Now, some people know this, some people don't. But on, if you see this on one part of the music, you go down later on in the music, you'll see another one, and that tells you to go back to where you see the first one. And I think the uh, the repeat sign, the first one is at major five, the second one is at major twenty uh, eight. So that this is the one at five, this is the one at twenty eight. When you get to twenty eight, you go back to five. And I always think of it like a couple of telephones. One is here, one is here. They talk to each other. This is not on your page, but this is a single bar repeat. Let's say you played a major here. This says, play that major again. It's a shortcut way of saying, play that major again, please. This is a two major repeat. Let's say you had two majors before. Do you see this? This says, play both majors again. Not this one twice. Play the previous two majors again. It's a shortcut way of writing it. That's just what they do sometimes. So that's that kind of covers the repeat sign. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's just music. It's not rocket science. <laughs> so, um, also, we want to, uh, I want to tell you about the, uh, the donation we're making this time. It's to the, the uh, Children's Health Fund. And they have, they have organizations in a lot of the larger cities. And they do great things for kids. They look out for their, uh, their welfare. And they um, have resources that people can use to help them out. So, I chose them this week. They have, I counted probably 10 places all over the United States mostly in larger cities that uh, are, are uh, helpful for children. And so you could make a donation to us, and we will, we will then extend one to them. Uh, let's see. Jamie, Lita says she still can't hear you. I'm thinking maybe the desktop audio is, I don't know for sure. We're working on it, Lita. Thank you for letting us know. I don't think it's you, Jamie. I think that uh, it's on our side. Okay. So we're, we're working on it. In the meantime, talking big letters. Uh, let's see. How about a gig tip for us? Jamie, you have a gig tip for us? I do have a gig tip. Hopefully you can hear. Uh, my tip for this week is to make sure your, uh, your expectations uh, are listed on your contract, specifically regarding what type of event that you will be playing and what the dress code is. There have been several times where I have been either under or overdressed. And um, along with knowing exactly kind of what vibe you'll want to provide for, you know, a wedding versus a, a pool party versus, you know, different kind of love songs, you want to know kind of what the vibe is. And, and being under or, or overdressed is not only awkward for you, it can be awkward for the people who hired you if you show up not looking as they expected. So definitely specific tip, but in general, make sure that these things are covered in your contract. That, that's great. That's stuff. great stuff. Uh, thank you. Uh, for thank you for helping us with the voice stuff. stuff. This, uh, this, this program, uh, we're, this using program we're using is OBS, open source program, open source for, program for everybody. We're, for everybody. Still, we're, we're still we several, working on it. We have several going so we're still things going on here. So we're my, still experimenting. Uh, producer, and my, uh, um, my producer, Miss uh, Congeniality, or is it Miss Congeniality? Misled. Her name is Misled. She's helping us. It changes every week. It changes every uh, week. One uh, time she was Miss. One time she was Miss Mississippi. So, um, so uh, we're working on it. And, we're working on it. Uh, and appreciate uh, that. Appreciate that. I also wanted to. I also I have wanted a to. I have a gig tip of my own, and that was. Uh, 
uh, where uh, to place the where mic, to place was, the one mic was one of them. I always put the mic on top. I don't think it I don't matters. Think it matters. I, had I had the mic on top or bottom. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. But on top, sometimes I get it when I'm playing, so I'm not crazy about that. But what was the other one, Jamie? We were talking earlier about the the shirts. Well, I mean, that goes along with the shirts. You mean the dress code? Yeah, you yeah, already, you already said that. That's right. That's right. Yes. What else were we talking the, about? The mic, well, uh, the, the other important one that I remember is what you just said, the miking. I hadn't miked my uh, pan until probably two years ago, and it makes a ginormous difference in the in the uh, the mix of what you're putting through your speaker. So, I mean, anywhere outside, mic your pan. Anywhere in a big concert hall or a big ballroom in a, in a hotel, mic your pan because then that means you're not playing so loud when people are right next to you. You can kind of bring down your volume um, of your hands so that because your mic is picking it up and bringing it out for you. So definitely. And then I like it under two. I don't think it makes a huge. There's not a huge difference between the two, but I like it under so you don't hit it. Yeah, I have one more gig tip. One time I was playing in Yoder, Kansas, where there's um, it was a small stage and uh, I didn't do a sound check. That was a mistake because uh, they have monitors that you know, I use my tracks a lot of times, and I had not, he had the monitors so loud, I, I, it almost blew me off the stage, it was incredibly loud, so I had to tell him, you know, not so much monitor, we had to adjust everything on the fly, which is never a good thing, so I'd say never skip the sound check as we struggle with our sound, but we have a couple of Zoom things going on here, and we have four or five mics in these crazy cameras, so thank you for keeping, helping us, they, they say I've got an echo now, sometimes I just repeat myself, so that's, that's also, all right, uh, we are going to play along a little bit, or we're going to uh, play some more. And one of those is that we're going to go to the theory sheet now. This song is in uh, the key of F. You can see I have on the theory sheet, I have the F major scale written there. And uh, I just want to, I played this lick a couple of times. I'm going to play it later, but I wanted to show you first. So I'm also going to go to the whiteboard now. I like this, this little uh, lick. If you're doing some improv, it's the C, D, F, G, and then back down. So it'll sound like this. Uh, and it does it doesn't matter how you play those. I was just kind of going up and down, but as long as you play those four song those four uh, notes together in kind of a speedy way, it's a great look to look to put in anywhere. Uh, later on I'll put that lick in and we'll talk about it. But uh, the key is F here. There's a lot of different chords in this one. And I was telling Jamie earlier, we should encourage them <clears throat> to look for things that aren't in the key signature. So anything that's a B flat is normal. That's a normal, um, that's a normal key. So um, that's a normal part of the scale. So if you see it like a D flat or a C, an E flat or an F sharp, those are foreign bodies in this key. So they, you have to be careful with those if you're doing improv, because if you're going to that uh, note, uh, sorry, the major, um, oh gosh, it's major six. There's a D7 chord in there. Well, if you just play an F major scale sort of thing, it's you, you can't do that. You have to make an alteration for that D chord, which has the F sharp in it. I think that's the only foreign body in there. So for instance, um, uh, this note. That, if you're doing improv, you have to address that that's, that, that, that one is there. Um, also, I wanted to show you this one that's the last. It's on your, on your theory sheet, it's a major 15. It's the B-flat chord over C. That means you have a B-flat chord over this. It's the bass player or whoever's playing the lowest note is playing C. So I play the B-flat chord over C. Now that the bass player is playing the C, you don't have to worry about that. But just uh, that that note is part of that chord. So uh, that's another thing. There's a C minor chord, C, E flat, G. Uh, and there's a C flat minor over an E flat. That just means that the bass player is probably playing an E flat. So I don't, I'm not really that concerned about that. I really want to know what chord I have to play. So the in that equation, I'm sorry, that might sound, sound like math, but in the equation that says major 13, C minor slash E flat, I don't really care about the E flat. I only want to know what chord am I playing because I'm not playing bass. If I'm playing bass, I'm on the wrong gig. And then on major 16, um, I want to, uh, on, the, on the theory sheet, 16, 17, 18, 
there's the pentatonic scale, which has five notes on it, pentatonic, uh, F, G, A, C, D, F. Uh, yeah. So you can play them down here. You can start down here. You can start anywhere, as long as you have those five notes, and you don't even have to play them in that order. the notes are right here in your pan, right here, a little smile, and then you have one down here, a bigger smile, and then you have a little one, no, don't do that one, you can do really, really fast notes, and, and uh, people would go, wow, listen to all those fast notes, but you're just going, look, I'm just playing the smiles, so, uh, let's see, what else are we talking about, improvisation on this one, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of chords changing, uh, there's a lot of fast changes, so my encouragement to you would be mark places where I have there's a landmine and the land the first landmine I see is major six on the second half of that major I see a D7 I go oh that's not that's not normal something's weird in there other than that I don't see a lot of things that aren't in if you spell all the chords that I've given you you won't see anything that's not in the key signature you won't see anything that's not in an F major scale except where you see the B minor or B flat minor where I've notated those the C minor. So, but I'm telling you, there's all. This is a fast-moving song as far as the uh, changes. So, what would you do if you had a fast-moving changes, Jamie? What I would do is go. Well, I'm going to play the melody a lot. I'm just going to mess around with the melody. Would that be a fair statement? Do you think? Yes, and then um, something I do if I'm trying to get better at improv at a tune like this, I will. Um, play the head once and then I will play the chord changes only the second time. Maybe I may, you know, quote a couple notes from the melody, but practice playing. You you're going to have to memorize if you, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't already know what a B flat minor six chord is, like we may, uh, you'll have to memorize those, but then play through the chord changes. And that will help if you're at a gig and you want to do that, it'll help you sound like you know what you're doing instead of just going all willy nilly because it, like you said, the landmines, if you don't, if you don't hit an F sharp or whatever else you chord changes are just play a little rhythm along with your backing track that's that's help that helps me tremendously i like to if i'm playing it for the first time uh starting on major uh, the melody i'm gonna start on the the verse uh, i'm staying very close to the melody. I'm not doing a lot of, uh, um, uh, I'm not varying a lot from the melody. I'm trying to stay near the melody, add some rhythm, and, uh, and you'll be fine. Again, if I, if I want to venture out on the second major of the melody, which is bar six, if I want to venture out into that, uh, I'll have a G minor chord, and then I have a D minor chord, or sorry, D7. I might try to find two notes that are uh, two notes on the G chord, which is G and B flat, G minor, and then uh, D, F sharp, A. I might find those notes, and just to, just to let the audience know, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not going to do anything extraordinary, but I know those are chord changes. Now, if you miss those, you know, just uh, find a couple notes in every chord change, and I, I try to find ones that are common. For instance, the first major of five, uh, the first notes you play at five, you have an F chord, that's F, A, C. And then you have A minor, A, C, E. You go, well, A, C are in both chords. So if I'm going to improv, I'm going to stay with A, C a lot. Because I, I, uh, those are common common chords, and you can you can do a lot with that. Here's the A, C. Now you can do a little, uh, Jamie was talking about last week, he's doing a flick. Oh, sorry. You have the A, C there. And you, those those are common uh, common tones to each chord, so you try to stay close to home. 
thing is that, uh, and I remember you telling me this when I was pretty young, is normally, even with a backtrack, the bass player is playing the root of the chord. And so something else to think about is that you don't have to play all three notes of every chord. And so, like my dad said, play, finding those common notes, but um, leaving the root um, to the bass player or the backtrack, and you play the three and the five or whatever. Yeah. Yes. I remember. I, uh, I remember playing golf one time, and, and the guy was saying, "Hey, I want you to put a fade on it and make sure you put a backspin." I'm like, "I'm just trying to hit the ball." So, uh, in, in so sometimes it's hard. I, I've been there. It's hard for people to go, "Okay, I see the F. I'm going to play an F." Now you're talking about different levels, but if I see the F, it's hard for me to think A C. So I'm going to play for sure F. That's level one. Then you start to go, okay, I don't want to play what, what I see. I want to play the other two notes. And you could write in chord, write in FAC. Uh, that's another way to do that. And try not to play the F because the chord, because the uh, bass player might be playing. But those are different levels of what, what you're comfortable with. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. I also want to encourage you to, to ask questions while we're chatting. Thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, Frank, for helping us. And Lita for uh, asking questions. Or, I'm sorry, helping us with the, with the uh, sound issues. Um, and uh, let's see what else we got. What else we have? Let's see. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you can all find today's music. Today's I just music, I just want to keep reiterating that. Um, that uh, uh, the Bradshore's uh, music the music.com. Go to the Steel Drum page. And you and can download, you can download, it, download it there. And I leave on, those, I might, I might leave those tracks, tracks on from last week. Maybe a couple maybe weeks, a couple maybe a week. Maybe a week. Just depends on. But, but they're not going to be, be there forever. After they're, After gone, they're gone, if you want to buy those, buy those then you go to tropicalshores.net and you can they're on super tracks. So, uh, so uh, tropical 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 I know it's confusing, but, uh, but uh, the Brad Short, Brad Short music is a way that I can, can, I can uh, have, it available have it available for you for, you for, a, donation for a donation and not force you to buy it. So, uh, yes, uh, yes, I also, I also want to remind you to subscribe, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and uh, and not, only not only subscribe, but check the one, check the bell, hit the bell that says all notifications. Because you want to know when things are happening. We figured out that's the way to do it because we're not experts yet. We will be. We will be. Uh, Major Brad Echo. Major Brad Echo. Well, okay. Well, we're working on it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, let's look for some questions. Anybody? Oh, that's great. Work your way through the series. Good. Better well, now well, for the, the Echo. That's we're good. Working we're working on the Echo. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody at home. Um, what questions would I have if I'm trying to learn this tune that I could explain uh, the rhythm that you see? That can be intimidating. <laughs> um, so it, again, I, a lot of this depends on what level you're at. This, I mean, I would suggest if you don't read rhythm or don't read music very well, then to listen to the song a bunch because what you see is actually pretty complicated to count. Um, so learning the tune or already knowing uh, if you were I, dad, I, but I would uh, say that already I would say that knowing the tune on this one is very very effective because some of it is very syncopated, meaning there's a lot of tough rhythms. But if you know it, it, you, it, it goes right with the with the vocals. So that you're right, that does help a lot. Um, is play along so that also helps too when you provide when you have something that provides uh, you a practice track and, and being able to hear you can kind of catch how the rhythm is supposed to go I was trying to think of what I normally get asked like how do you how do you know how to do that yeah um, did, you talked about the uh, double shots right on the on the on the uh, high notes did, yeah. yeah if you can do that I, I like doing that on this one too because it, it helps boost the lower note like yeah, I like that a lot. I haven't done that. I, I do that on Spanish eyes too. Yeah, Spanish eyes has a lot of high notes on it. Maybe we should do that one sometime. Uh, hey, how about we look at that? There might be some people who didn't see the birthday pictures. Should, should we go back to that for just a second? Sorry. Oh, yeah. So. So there's, the there's the pictures, and uh, the one on the on their right is uh, that's her second birthday party, 
And uh, there and, is uh, one where you're uh, with my steel drum back in the early days, but I, I couldn't find it. You were like sitting on it, like a jungle gym. <laughs> Good stuff. I wish I had that. I would put that on my website, which I think we'll cover more about websites and and kind of the the online presence thing maybe next week. So we'll see uh, yeah. if that comes up yeah. next week. Oh, we have a question. As a beginner on playing tenor, what would you suggest I should practice on? Um, does that mean like what tunes maybe? Is that maybe what you're asking? What tunes or? And a lot of that, if I may interject here, since if I may interject with my show. Um, I'm kidding, I was aggressive. Uh, a lot of that depends on how well versed you are in music. Now, I, I'm gonna use myself for an example. I had, you know, when I started steel drum, I had a music degree and I played piano and drums. I mean, I had a lot of music, natural, I had a lot of talent. I mean, that sounded horrible. I had a lot of experience and uh, I knew all I needed to do was find the notes. So I just started playing. I didn't practice my scales. In fact, we were gigging two days after we got our first drums. So it was like uh, baptism of fire. So I started playing. Now, if, if you don't know anything about music, then I would start by doing scales. I'd find a C scale, F scale, and I'd find some easy songs. And I wonder who has stuff like, oh yeah, I have stuff like that. If you go to tropicalshores.net, there are some, there's a, a two books. One is uh, Beginning Tunes 1 and then Beginning Tunes 2. These are easy songs that allow you to have success at a very, uh, uh, and they have backing tracks and all that stuff. They allow you to have a lot of success quickly because they're not they're not fast notes. They're not uh, how deep is your love? And they're not you know El Kuma Joe or one of those fast ones. They're very slow. It allows you to get comfortable, but you still can sound good and you can still still play. That's great. Yes. Not a very good sound but yeah, but let me let me address that if I may. <laughs> I get excited. Sorry. I know. <laughs> I know. I always tell her, read the question, then I'm not there. Um, those notes are written in, um, seasoned drummer, I'm talking to you, those notes are written in, and uh, you really don't have to read much music. It helps, but uh, definitely with sight reading, the notes are in there, and you, the track has me playing along with you, and then the other track, you just play it by yourself. We call that music minus one, basically. So uh, I found that uh, the songs are slow enough to where you can... Uh, Learn the pan, and then you, and that's a great way to play some songs. But you, you're not going to get frustrated playing stuff you can't play. So that's thank you. But he's not good at improvising. Go ahead, I will defer oh, to boy. you. Okay. Oh boy. Now that's a whole different that's a whole different show. Um, things like play the melody, but uh, don't don't stray from the melody. But use rhythmic figures to play the melody, but only in a rhythmic variation. Uh, use chord tones, because I think the chords are on that sheet as well. Use the chord tones and go, okay, I'm just going to play the song with chord tones. I'm going to, I call it, don't step on any landmines. If you stay on the chord tones, you're on the rocks, or you're in the footsteps of the guy before you. You're not going to step on landmines because you, you're in the right place. Those, that's a, a, and then you get more confident. Play the melody, but play a little bit uh, chord tones, play a little bit of uh, rhythmic variation. Start to add those little flicks like Jamie was saying last week, the little flick, the little embellishment. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, and and also, uh, please <laughs> please let me know if I can help you. Brad at tropicalshores.net. Email me. We can go more in depth. I'd be happy to help you. That's what we're here for. All right, uh, Jamie. Kathy G says a happy Valentine's Day and happy birthday. The pictures are adorable. I know. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. If let's we're gonna play do the play along. So if you have your music um, and your pan, and here we're gonna do the play along. I'm gonna play through the whole thing now. I may play the whole. <clears throat> I may do some. Uh, not. I may put some double stops in. That means harmonization. I might harmonize the second time through. I might do a little harmonization. You never know what I'm gonna do. It's always just a. You never know. So here we go. Thank you. 
lot of that that I used, uh, I used a lot of, I tried to use a lot of what we talked about, the, Jamie talked about the octaves, the octaves. and then I tried to use that pentatonic use that scale. scale, and I used the lick I showed you earlier, and I did I use did. this one, I want to show you this one thing, when we got to the D7 chord on major 6, I like to outline, I just outlined the chord, yes I did it quickly, D, F sharp, A, C, E flat, uh, it's an E flat on there. It's actually it's actually a D7 chord. Sorry. I put the E flat, the on, e flat there on there. Just... It just—it's a good little fast lick. I just outlined the chord. It's nothing magical. You just have to do it quickly. That's all. Would you agree, Jamie? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, uh, and on the end, uh, on the I did F7 chord. F7 chord would be F A. C, and then E, put your 7 on there, you have 1, 3, 5, 7. You can't do them all at once, that's the hard part. You want to play the whole chord, but you can't. So let the bass player play the F, and you play. So that's that's another tip for improvisation. That's been uh, that's a lot of information, and, and we really do appreciate everybody helping us with the... Uh, with the um, sound and all that stuff. It's very helpful for us. Yes. All right. And again, I, I know I can speak for myself. I'm, I'm uh, always here to help if you have any uh, questions. I have done Zooms with people that, that have needed extra help and just needed a little bit more extra attention on uh, particular issues. If I can help you, all you have to do is email me and, and say, hey, would you be interested in helping me? That's, that's what we're here to do. And uh, I want to encourage you to uh, make a donation for us. We're, we're uh, giving to the Children's Fund, which I already explained. But uh, if you can do that for us, that would be great. Make sure you subscribe, do the bell. We're going through all of our list of things. Anything else, Jamie, for the good of the order? Okay, well, okay, well I want to thank you, Jamie, thank- for your help. Let's uh, uh, thank uh, Miss, Miss Information, who's our producer. <laughs> uh, we want to thank you guys sure. for coming and joining us. And, uh, again, just uh, your patience as we as we work through this. And... Uh, We'll do it again next week on February 21st, live at 5, uh, Steel Drum Lessons. We'll see you later.